bloody look like in his soup and fish, eh? Look like you'll be waiting on that table, not trying to play snooker on it. <laughs> well, go on, Ed, go on! Have a go at it, go on! Try and get out of it. <laughs> you can't, can you? It's no good staring at it, won't go away. <laughs> no good going up that way. I see what's in your mind, I see what you're thinking. On that cushion, off the other one, it's not going to work. <laughs> Pure luck, you jammy bugger, you. I'll turn you off, do you hear me? Off, off, off. Wouldn't have turned you on in the first place, I know it was you standing here, sparking your bloody head. <laughs> Get you, Peruvian punch, you. <laughs> you well spot to get off. <laughs> bloody adverts. More bloody adverts. Bloody crappy kraut motor cars. Well, in <laughs> we won the war. Oh, God. Bloody BBC two long haired crap. <laughs> I'll give him Peacock, all right. <laughs> I'll give him Slot and the Machine, all right, for that rubbish. Look at him standing there waving his bloody stick. Why don't you wave your nose at me? It's long enough. <laughs> you I'm talking to, Ikey. Bloody band's big enough and all, innit? <laughs> I've heard better music than that from Joe Lost with a band half that size. <laughs> Waste the bloody money. Who put you on, eh? Who put you on? One of your bum friends, was it? Get off! God <laughs> yeah. oh, blimey. You're still where you was, ain't you? You ain't hit a ball since I've been gone, have you? Got anyone in here? Yes! The room is full of them. Can't you see them? <laughs> George, Fred, Mrs. Oliveri, Mrs. Oliveri, George, Fred. Who was you talking to? George and Fred! <laughs> I heard voices. Well, keep it down, fellas, will you disturb it? <laughs> Listen, what's it got to do with you if I have people in here at night, eh? It's ain't a boarding house, you're not the landlady, it's my home, I live here. Well, it might be your home, but it's my home as well. Now, I don't want you filling it with strangers at this time of night. They're not strangers, I've known them for years. <laughs> You've been introduced, didn't you? I heard voices. Ghosts. <laughs> it's a ghost to your husband, come back to haunt you. <laughs> you had any sense, you'd haunt somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I was a ghost, I wouldn't haunt you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it would. That front door's not bolted. Oh, God, here we go again. No one's going to come in. I'll bolt it before I go to bed. Anyone could open that front door and creep up my stairs. Who's going to... You wouldn't hear them. Who's going to creep up your stairs this time of night? God's truth. There was a woman my age, old age pensioner, raped only the other night in those buildings round the corner. Luck of the draw, innit? <laughs> Your turn next, perhaps, eh? <laughs> Go on, then, Pot, and if you're going to pop the bloody thing for crying out loud, what's the matter with you? It was you talking down here, talking to yourself. Gordon Bennett, you see that? Look at that, look, look. His Wesker button touched the ball. Foul him, ref. Foul him, don't let him get away with it. You blind, don't let him get away with it. Foul him. Has your daughter seen you like this? You bloody lying, twisting, cheating Welsh git. <laughs> you're not well. <laughs> I'm not standing here watching this bloody rubbish. I've got a bed. There. There. I bolted it for her. There, you're safe now. No raving madman's going to get you now, is he? Raving madman? He'd have to be to come up your stairs, wouldn't he? <laughs> you can sleep tight now. No boogeyman is going to get you. <laughs>
bloody Jane. <laughs> no, it ain't locked. Hey, and the key's on the other side. It's that bloody Darth Mania upstairs, hey! <laughs> Open this bloody door! Christ, I'm busted. <laughs> Open this door! I want to have a... Just going out, I see. So? Well, what are um, you doing? Are you all right? Yeah. Um, I, I didn't know you was coming, did I? So? I'm here. I want to come in. Come yeah, on. but you... <laughs> you should have let me know you was coming. What's that got to do with it? Come on, let me in. Oh, look, Dad, I don't want to stand talking on the doorstep. I'm tired. Just come all the way from Liverpool. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What's going on? Nothing. Oh, she's, she's all right. I mean, she's always like this. She's on the change. I mean, I get this all the time off of her. Get out of there. No. Come on, come on, let me in. Stop come it. On. No, let me look. When Mr Johnson phoned and said you was acting peculiar, I thought... <laughs> what are you doing? No. Nothing. Anyway, she deserves it. And whatever she says, it's lies. Bloody lies. <laughs> Hello. 
I'm just saying to Marigold. Hey, I'm hey, less of the Marigold. It's Winston, if you don't mind. <laughs> All right, Gongadin. <laughs> Bloody immigrants. <laughs> Where have you been? I'm sorry I couldn't make it this morning, Buana, but I had to go to Heathrow, meet my cousin. Oh, bloody it marvellous. They're flying them in now. <laughs> What's the hurry? Couldn't you get on a banana boat? <laughs> He's fixed himself up with a job. I had to go and meet him, show him his dig. Oh, bloody Four million unemployed, they're flying his cousin in. <laughs> What's he, a brain surgeon? Bricklayer. <laughs> Bricklayer? Has he got his own odd? <laughs> He likes to fly. I like to fly. I fly whenever I can. I flew up to Manchester when West Ham played up there. I flew up to Liverpool with them. I fly all a lot of away games I do. No, I say jet setters working for the local council now. <laughs> Half ounce of some Bruno. Hey, Mrs. Olinbury smells that. You won't be safe. You'll be in for a hot time. <laughs> oh, yeah. And if the coppers smell what you're going to be smoking, mate, you'll be in for a long time. <laughs> Mr. Garnet, I'm uh, very, very sorry to hear of the loss of your wonderful good lady. Uh, sorry business. Yeah, well, happens to all of us, don't it? Oh, yes. But it was a very sad loss to me. It's a very sad loss to me, mate. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, yes. But I have lost a very good customer. And I have lost a very good wife. Oh, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> But, but, but it was a bad blow to me, her going like that, so sudden. It was a very bad blow to me at all. <laughs> oh, yes, very bad blow. But, but, but it has done me no good, her going like that, so sudden. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, uh, uh, she went owing me a few pounds. <laughs> That's a nice thing to say. I'm not saying anything. Not saying anything? <laughs> Bringing that up, maligning the woman, now she gone? Marigold, I am not maligning her. I'm not saying anything against her. All I am saying is, if Mrs. Garnet had gone on Saturday instead of Wednesday, <laughs> I'd be all right. Because, you see, she always paid me Friday. <laughs> no, I don't suppose she wanted to go on Wednesday. <laughs> I dare say if she'd had her way, she'd have preferred to wait till Saturday. Or even longer. If I'd had my way, she wouldn't have gone at all, because I'm the one who's in a mess with that bloody thing living upstairs to me. I mean, you don't think she went on a Wednesday just to do you out of a few quid, do you? I, I, I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, it has cost me money. It's cost me money, Sabu! <laughs> And what you got for sitting in that wheelchair of hers? Uh, yes, 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 I'm sure. But her going on Wednesday is no good to me. It is just my luck. Just your luck? What about my bloody luck? What about her luck? You shut up! <laughs> oh, my God, I am not blaming her. Mrs Garnet was a very good customer and a very good pair. All I am saying is... He knows. Hmm? He comes into the shop. He takes the groceries. Put them on the slate. Mrs. Garnet will pay you later. And she did. She always paid you. Not now. She cannot pay me now. That is what I am saying, Sambo. <laughs> <laughs> this one orders. This marigold orders. Put on the slate, put on the slate, put on the slate. And then she passes on. But it's not my fault, is it? I'm not saying it is your But why place. are you telling me, then? What does Mr Garnet owe you? Mr Garnet don't owe nothing. Mr Garnet owes for this tobacco. That's all Mr Garnet owes for. Well, what Mrs Garnet owed? What Mrs Garnet owed, Mrs Garnet owed. I'm thinking <laughs> this would happen. I saw very well you come along saying my Mrs owed you money. I mean, God, bro, where's your proof, eh? I mean, any old Tom, Dick, Harry come knocking in the front door saying your wife owes her money, especially if she's passed on, she's not there to deny it to the face. What proof of you? That's what I'm talking about. Proof, mate. Bills. Bills, mate. That's what I want to see is bills signed. Bills and statements. Signed statements with signatures on them, John John. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do business in this country, John John. <laughs> signatures, not by ESA. I want to take my custom elsewhere from now on. From now on, I buy British. <laughs> what do you think I am? Bleeding Japanese? <laughs> Will you shut up? Will you 
Keep quiet. I am trying to talk to my daughter. Look, first of all, she bolts me out of the house, eh? I can't get in. It's pouring down the road. I had to spend a night over the Johnson and sleep on their bloody sofa. Will you shut up and listen? Then she locks me in my room, in my own room. I had to climb out the window to have a... I mean, in my own house. <laughs> You tell her, you tell her, I shouldn't have to do that, not my time of life. She's here, she's standing here. No, her. you tell her, no. I wouldn't talk to her. Oh, here, yeah. you tell him I don't want him talking to me. You tell her I wouldn't talk to her. No, she was the last person on earth I wouldn't talk to no, her. No, you tell him I wouldn't listen to him if he did. Even if he was the last person on earth. You tell her I wouldn't waste my breath talking to her. Oh, you tell him I wouldn't listen to him if he did. Oh, you are making it hard for each other. Look, you've got to come to some arrangement. You can't go on like this. You tell him there's someone knocking on his front door. You tell her it's her front door as well. Oh, oh he's got a key. Who gave him a key? I did. Why? So as he could get in, of course. <laughs> well, I don't like him having a key. None of your business. It's my front door as well. Oh, yes, yeah, your front door now. There's nobody knocking on it, innit? Hello, everyone's in a party mood, I see. Shut up, you. Want more money, I suppose? Oh, well, well, keep your hair on. Don't be facetious. Who's <laughs> 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 a bit of settling up to do? Settling up, marvellous. More debt she's left for me. Well, she couldn't pay me when she was in hospital. Then I popped off on my holidays. Anyway, I wasn't worried. Oh, you wasn't worried? No. I knew it'd be all right. <laughs> he knew it'd be all right. That's marvellous. Yes. Isn't it? Now, let's see. Here we are. Milk, butter, eggs. Oh, a few small bets went down. A few small bets. God, blimey. Gambling till the end, she was. <laughs> ah, yes. And uh, there was one big bet. Also at Newmarket. She really fancied it. Said it reminded her of you. <laughs> a 60 to 1 outsider wearing blinkers. <laughs> <laughs> she had £5 on it to win. What a punter. £5 to win on a 60 to 1 outsider? God, blimey. She was scared you'd find out. Well, I have, not I? Too late, that's the trouble. You'd have stopped it, would you? Of course I'd have bloody stopped it. It's bad enough running up bills without running up gambling debts as well. Bloody women, they beggar you. It's all right for you, like you, you bloody women you got your women's lib. What about us? What about your man's lib? Oh. Yes, your man's lib. Every debt a woman runs up, a man is responsible. I mean, what are we, the keepers? <laughs> I mean, they take away your reins for controlling them, and when they gallop off, <laughs> spending your money, we're held responsible. Daughter left that Mrs. Pankhurst chained to them bleeding railings. <laughs> I, will appeal, I shall appeal. I'll appeal to the European court. When I married her, a woman's place was in the home. Oh. And the only... Yes, it was. And the only money that a woman was allowed to spend was what her husband chose to give her. And I ain't paying for no daft bets of five pounds or sixty... <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was. 300 pounds. <laughs> hey, do you know what the name of the horse was? Chauvinist Pig. <laughs> so you're going up the pub with your winnings then, Daddy? Well, uh, spend a bit of it, you know. Have a little party. I mean, you've got to celebrate, ain't you? I'm sure she would have wanted me to. <laughs> yeah, sure she would. You're coming home, aren't you? Later. I just got to phone home first. By the way, Dad... What? Um, I'm inviting Mrs. Ongren. What? <laughs> I've invited Mrs. Ollingbury. You what? <laughs> I think it's stupid the way you two are behaving. You've got to make the effort. You've got to be try and be friendly. No, God, Blimey, no, I don't want it here. Blimey, it's a party, not a bloody wake. <laughs> thought they're both the same to you, just another excuse to get drunk. No, I don't. Not that you need an excuse, you I have done. I don't want it at my party. Bloody miserable cow she is. <laughs> I don't care if she does hear me. Well, I've invited her now. Oh, gold. I think she likes you, really. Get off out of it. <laughs> she does, but, uh, I mean, she's just overawed by you. Overawed? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, well, I mean, she's never met a man like you before. Because <laughs> her own man, her husband, was sort of, well, he was sort of ordinary. And now she's confronted, she says, by, um... Strong-willed, powerful, 
Perhaps I've been a bit hard, I know. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, Al. Cheers, Al. Wherever she may be. Oh, she's up there half away. Right. That's where she'd be. Seated upon his right hand, getting her just to search for the good life that she lived down here. You do believe in heaven, as you offer? Oh, I don't know, Alf. I'd like to think there was heaven and that I'd be going up there to better things, but, well, I mean, if there is, it depends a bit on who's running it, doesn't it? How do you mean? Mm. Well, I mean, it's, it's Lord God, isn't it? It's not Fred God or Harry God. <laughs> it's Lord God, isn't it? That's how much like a working class heaven do it. I think it's the same old crowd uh, running it up there that's got it all down there. <laughs> From my experience and what I've seen of God and his bishops and his synods <laughs> and what they let go on down here, I don't think he's much better than Mrs. Thatcher or Norman Tebbit. <laughs> Why should it be, Arthur? Hmm? Yeah, well, it's their world, isn't it? I mean, it's their heaven. You want to know the truth, Alf? Yeah, I want to know the truth. Right. Tell well, me the truth. I'll tell you the unadulterated truth. Straight horse's mouth. Right? Absolutely. I think, I think, that what's going to happen to anyone or anything is what happens down here. I reckon all we're put here for is to make a few bob, if we can, yeah. have a good time spending it, mm -hmm. and then go quietly when they call time. <laughs> I mean, it's, I'm all right, Jack, sod you, and all the rest is through. No, no, yes, no, no yes, there's yes. got to be heaven, Arthur. No. If there's a God, there's got to be heaven. Otherwise, where else are you going to live, yeah. eh? <laughs> anyway, he has, he's told us there's heaven, hasn't he? he? He promised it unto us, didn't he? God don't tell lies, is he? No. Not a politician, is he? <laughs> you don't have to rely on votes. I mean, he's got no, I mean, he's got nothing to gain from telling lies, besides of which, I mean, why why do you go all the trouble, make all of this? You and me, all the animals, the stars, the universe, and that. And it, it's all written in the good book. It's there in the Bible. The good Lord. He made us in his own image. What well, God looks like you? <laughs> <laughs> Exact resemblance. And, um, no, God probably looks more like Charlton Eston. <laughs> he probably made Charlton Eston to play God in films. <laughs> Be better than Reagan. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I do. He, he won't bear in some of them cowboy films, right, would he? Right, yeah. But they never let him play a president. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even let him get the girl. <laughs> he had to be satisfied with a chimp. <laughs> Clark Gable always got a girl. That's right. Hey. <laughs> what that means that he made us in his own image means that he's made us perfect like himself. You perfect? I'm not perfect, no, I say it. I've got my faults, I know that. What it means perfect is he has made us perfect in build and in shape, is he? In build and in shape. Look at my <laughs> laughing. Look, my dear, look at the one. Uh, a hand, right? Look, you see, there's another one. A hand. <laughs> see, and he, he give us four fingers and a thumb on each hand. Even do that, two hands. Hand. He, he put them on the end of your arms, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Where well, they would be most handy. <laughs> four 
handling your whiskey. <laughs> handling your cigar. Mm, which is why they're called hands, I suppose. <laughs> and look, look. See, it give us a nose and two ears to hang your spectacles on. <laughs> he never gave you no air, did he? Air <laughs> <laughs> is mostly for monkeys. <laughs> look at this one. He's got a face like a busted sofa. Look at him. <laughs> Why not? This is my cousin, Christy. The one I'm at Heathrow from Dublin. Oh, but Jesus. How are you, Mr. Garner? <laughs> you having a Guinness with you now? <laughs> Bloody blackface Mick! <laughs> Place of mine. Hmm? You haven't bolted the door. <laughs> Frankly, Mrs. Oliveri, I don't give a damn. 